Oh, uh, hey, good to have you on, Trent. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, Ed, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Good to see you again. As always, mate. As always. Great to see you. Yeah. So we've got a few people in here, a couple that will watch the replay as well. Um, quite a lot of people here from either Sydney and WA, it seems like. So yeah, everyone else must be an outcast. <laughs> no, but um just to like get started, what I'll quickly share with everyone is that um I've I've known of Trent for a while. I didn't actually meet you, Trent, till like probably two weeks ago or something now after that famous uh incident that we went through. Trent was actually for everyone's reference, Trent was actually one of the first people that we contacted after we had that brownie incident in Thailand, because um we know that Trent has is really knowledgeable with his plants, herbs, and all of that kind of stuff. And it's actually kind of what led us to do this type of interview because um, we realized the importance of plant medicine and what can, it can actually do to the body. And I don't think if it were for you, Trent, and a few others that we contacted, we probably would have still been panicking and like, the, what the fuck happened to us? But in that in that moment, we realized like if plant medicine is actually powerful. I've heard that in Australia, they've now legalized some parts of plant medicine, which I'm sure you're aware about. Um, and it kind of got us the idea to actually get Trent speaking on this because we've been running a series on being your own physician for the last two or three weeks and um, plant medicine would be a good, another great angle to come at it from from a more physical point of view because um, we've been focusing a lot more on the etheric body and using energy medicine but I wanted to actually give another angle which is plant medicine and a physical so to get things started off before I get you to introduce yourself Trent I'll quickly give a bit of background to you for people that aren't aware of who you are but um Trent has one of the best stories that I've ever heard like I was pretty much my jaw was pretty much on the floor when you were telling me your story like I was quite stunned with it um because it's probably one of the most incredible stories of like recovery that I've ever heard from a mental health point of view and just from um that side of things I know Trent's been a mental health advocate for the past 15 years and a master trainer with different organizations and different um, places like Mental Health First Aid in Australia. Um, he's been an ambassador for organizations like Are You OK, which is, as we know, one of the biggest mental health organizations in Australia and Beyond Blue, um, plus a few others. Uh, I'm pretty sure you, like, you've like you also telling me how you've worked with certain governments in plant medicine, but I'll let you share more about that when I get you speaking. Trent's also the founder of two companies, one called Prevent Consultants and another one called Carne Bosom. I think that's how you pronounce it, which is a plant-based medicine organization that's currently teaching people all around the world about the power of plant medicine and healing the body and healing the energy of people um, using the assistance of in power of intention and a few other things. But to get started, Trent... Um, can you share your story and summary of what you've actually been through as a child? Um, what made you who you are today and what kind of got you started on this journey of being your own physician with plant medicine? Uh, yeah, sure, Ed. Um, in a bit of a brief rundown, I guess, is that uh, I come from a really loving, caring family, quite a small family, sort of grew up out in the, in the country. So uh, probably a bit more country bumpkin, so to speak, um, you know, growing up in those sense. Uh, as I kind of grew up, I guess sort of where it kind of draws in, I guess what we're here to talk about today is uh, just around a lot of challenges that I had as a younger person uh, growing up. And a lot of those challenges was really around about, I guess, sort of knowing what my identity was. When I look back at it now, I, I can see it in a whole different light, like almost from a different perspective. But as a, a young child, it was a little bit more of a challenge. And I believe that a lot of challenges I had, which like, like most of us do, I think that I'd find it very hard to believe if... Uh, if everybody didn't suffer some form of childhood trauma to, to some degree. Um, I know we spoke about this the other week, Ed, but like we come into the world crying, you know, so we kind of experience trauma the moment that we get here. But for myself, not having a father figure and having some of those abandonment issues really played a big part in what my behaviours were like. So for myself, from quite a young age, uh, I was kind of labelled a lot, things that I don't stand by in any way, shape or form, uh, now that I sort of take responsibility for myself in, in every way. But I had a lot of things like ADHD, uh, depression, had a lot of challenges as well, too, in regards to with food, a lot of emotional eating, thinking that food was the enemy as well. Really just, I guess, growing up for myself, I never really understood what I really teach now and around about our health being kind of three pillars of thoughts, feelings and behaviours. 
And I found at times in my life that I would attach to potentially what would have been a behavior like that's who I was. Um, and that's who I needed to be. Same as when I might be going through some challenges of, of feelings or emotions. I didn't realize at a younger age that they were just emotions that I was going through and they became a big part of my identity. Um, moved around to a fair few different schools. And I guess that really for myself, whilst I was kind of being labeled often around about not really fitting in, I always saw myself as really quite special. And as I look back at it now, I realized that I was just somebody that didn't really fall into the status quo. I really challenged a lot of things. I was really like a why person. And that can be really challenging. And, you know, when you talk around about mental health, like one of the greatest ways to discredit somebody is to write them off with an illness when they've probably got something quite sensible to say or something that's got quite a little bit of power to it. Um, growing up, Ed was very much in tune uh, spiritually, always felt that I always saw things, felt things and connected things very differently, but was often labeled like that was an illness. Um, for myself, I had some pretty bad experiences uh, when I was younger. So suicide was a, a part of my life growing up. Looking back through it now, I believe a big part of that was probably environments that I was associated with. Uh, I mean, a way that those environments may, be, may have been affecting me. Um, but what did happen is that I had a lot of bad experiences on the professional sense. And a lot of that stuff, when we talk around about, you know, going and getting help and we go and see professionals, well, those professionals are really only sort of saying it out of one, one book, which is the book that they've kind of learned. It doesn't really come from a lived experience way. And it isn't really that personal in any way, shape or form. So for myself, I was having the challenges within the system, within the medical system and the health system. Uh, I also encountered a few other things around about people that were in my community, in my society that really saw it as a weakness um, and looking for help with things with weaknesses. And it sort of led me to being bullied in certain parts of my life and not for long periods of time, but I most certainly got an understanding and a taste what that was like. I also found that through the professional help that I was receiving, the, the concept that was taken, I never felt was the right one. It was always looking at what was going on in the mind and let's work out what's going on in the mind before we look at anything else. And one thing which I stand by now is that philosophy is the whole other way. Like we've got to look at things from the, the, the feet up. And what we find is when we look at things from the head down is where we start with things like medication straight off the bat. And one thing which I said a long time ago, which I still stand by to this day, is that I found in my personal experience is that when I was taking large doses of medication, I really felt like I was soulless. And it really like disempowered me and stopped me the ability to do what I kind of needed to do, whether that was moving, having social connection, interaction. So at a younger age, I decided that I was going to sort of do this myself um, and said no to the professional system, so to speak, and the, the assistance which was being offered. Um, and I decided to do things, sort of take things out of my own hands. And I became what one would call, I guess, addicted to substances or illegal substances uh, at quite a young age. Um, in sort of the later teens. Very interesting, those same things that kind of got me in trouble and, and sent me to prison for were the same things that kind of get prescribed daily to kids, um, just in a different format, just through a pharmaceutical. So within my time, uh, especially when I was in prison, that was a higher time of trauma. And I thought that I'd felt trauma leading up until then, but most certainly had no real idea what that was like. And, and also seeing the way that it affects other people, um, really took control of, of my thoughts in those moments and, and really kind of had to be on my own in those moments. You know, a lot of times I was isolated in certain areas, uh, which is allegedly for your own safety from your own health background. So I had to spend a lot of time like alone, you know, and being alone and, and dealing through things and working through things. And it was in those moments that I, I really found, and I guess I really came to that philosophy, the feet up and understood the power of movement and understanding that, you know, we're energy beings and emotions is really that energy in motion and, and to move through with it. And when I, uh, my time was sort of done from there was, you know, I needed to, to find a new environment and get a bit of a clean slate and rebuild and, that can be really difficult because when you've been isolated, isolated from society, it probably takes just as long as that you've been isolated to kind of integrate back into society. And there's, there's so many changes um, and you have a lot of judgment, which you place upon yourself as well too. So there's a lot of those things to work through, but coming back out of there, uh, I really understood the power of movement. So I spent a lot of time in the physical, uh, physical fitness world and started to train a lot of people and, sort of brought one of my other philosophies of act, belong, commit, you know, in, in being active, but belonging to a group and doing that and, and committing to something and saw the benefits that was doing for myself and, and for many other people. And hadn't at this point really correlated the, 
the physical and the mental will be in the same link. So I used to treat things a little bit different and it sort of started with physical for myself. Um, within there as well too, then I started to, to look at the mental side of things and it didn't take me long to realize that everything was connected and that it worked together. And if one was doing well, then the, the other one would as well. And on those journeys, I guess, uh, I started to dive into that mental health space. I started to go down a career in the mental health professional world. Um, whilst I enjoyed all my time and I still play in the mental health world, I most certainly come from a very different holistic approach, which I believe is where the future, where this will go. Because what I did find through all of my time in mental health, no matter who I was working for or ambassading uh, or even my own learnings, is that we're, just, we're very much told how to look out for other people um, and how we can assist other people, but we're not given the tools and actually how we look after ourselves. And it's almost like that the solution is always going to be external, where I believe the solution is always internal. You know, I, I kind of also agree that or say often that when it comes to people being ill, like I, I personally don't think anybody is ill. I think that the environments they may be spending their time in or the larger environment is quite ill. And that can really rub off onto us. Um, and that really most certainly can play with the etheric body as well too. But uh, in the more recent years, in sort of the last three or four years, I've really sort of dove in and steered away from the mainstream, I guess, mainstream learnings of what mental health is and had some really good people around me, some good trainers, some good mentors, some great colleagues, a lot of people with lived experience, engaged with many. And I truly believe that, you know, plant-based medicine um, and etheric work is really where we need to be in this space. Um, I've learned a lot from my walks of life, which I'm more than happy to share bits and pieces as we chat today and, and into the future. Um, but where I kind of stand now is I truly believe that not only with, not only in regards to mental health, but health in general, and a lot of the challenges that we're feeling here in Australia and around the world can be solved for the use of, of, of hemp and cannabis. Um, and most certainly as well too, with the, the support of, you know, having the right intuition, uh, sorry, having the right intentions behind what we're doing. Um, so now where I kind of sit now, I guess that is that walk to life. I've traveled a lot. Uh, I've traveled 69 countries pretty extensively. Um, cannabis has been a huge part of my life for, for 20 years on a day-to-day -day basis. Probably the only time it wouldn't have been would have been when I was in prison. Um, so mate, it's something which I'm very passionate about, um, and, and happy to share with, with your audience today, anything around about mental health, um, around about cannabis and also around about, you know, clearing clearing the etheric body and, and working through things with the power of, of yourself. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. It's always good to hear someone who's actually lived and been through it. And when you were speaking about cannabis and plant medicine and the role it plays on it, um, I remember before like the whole experience, I, I always used to look at people who would do cannabis and kind of use plant medicine for healing purposes and all that. I don't know what everyone else's view is on it. That's listening in, but I used to kind of, I, I wouldn't say I, I dismissed it, but I'd more think surely there's better ways to do it and um and think about kind of like, I don't know, like is there risks to it? Is there like um what what happens if I get addicted to the, the cannabis or the weed? But what actually is your opinion based on your experience behind what research has shown around plant medicine now that we're seeing countries like Thailand, Australia, and other ones in the role that plant medicine plays in healing your etheric and just healing your mental health? Yeah, well, mate, there's, there's, there's probably a fair few parts of that question. Um, and I think the first thing is like, what's the real barrier that is really stopping cannabis and plant-based medicine is really a subconscious beliefs that are, are built around fear, I guess. There's so much propaganda, which has been driven around about cannabis and, and other natural medicines for such a long period of time that most people that you ask what their fear is behind it, they don't even really know. That fear probably is, you know, a fear that might have been passed down from an environment they've been in, whether it be their parents, whether it be what they've seen in TV, movies, or whatever it may be. But the plant and, and plant-based medicine is, is the last thing to be feared of in any way, shape, or form. And I guess to give you a bit of a background on, on why we feel that way is that it hasn't been like that for very long at all, Ed. It's probably only been about 80 years that we've had this fear around it. And that fear is really driven around about what is, you know, the war on drugs. Um, and for anybody that, that might know a little bit about the war on drugs, and if you don't, I highly recommend a book called Chasing the Scream uh, by Johan Hari. Um, and that's very much, that book has very much led to kind of what's happening in Portugal and other areas at the moment. But when we talk around about the war on drugs is the, the war on drugs was really a big play in the US is where it started. A gentleman by the name of Harry Enslinger uh, single-handedly started the DEA agency. And really what it was, it was kind of, 
in all honesty, it was really built on racism and it was around about how we could get people in the prisons and how that slave labour could continue within the prisons. While slavery ended in the US and other parts of the world in the public, it most certainly didn't change when it was in the private and the prison system really took advantage of that. Four things that you once used to be able to purchase over pharmaceutical, even harder drugs, you know, and other plant-based things that um, you could get, you could always get it over the pharmacy and then literally overnight when the war on drugs starts, well, it creates a black market, which then brings so many other things to it as well too, which then implements and I guess gives a very negative uh, stigma towards things, uh, especially when they're all grouped in together. But that fear that we kind of hold is really all built off the back of those war on drugs and a lot of that propaganda, which was pushed out because so many things when we talk about plant-based medicine, well, we could all probably be doing it ourselves in our backyard and we could be healing ourselves with many things. Um, it's just around about having that education and that knowledge the one thing that we do, and if I sort of speak around about Australia here and or probably the Western world in general, is that, again, that war on drugs, what it does, you know, in the subconscious and the unconscious mind is it it relates things like, you know, things like self-medication and things like drugs as a criminal offence and as a criminal problem, where it's probably more associated towards health than anything, more than criminal. But it really steers people into thinking very negative around about these things and where it's at. Um, the things that we are seeing, it, it's, it's again, we're seeing it resurface again now, but we can go back as, as old as like, you know, 60,000 years and we can see plant and, and plant and, uh, and natural medicines being utilized forever. It's only in this more recent, those 80 years. So we really need to change, I guess, we need to re-educate people back on to kind of how this happened, like sort of how we got to here, but how it's worked previously, it's always been used for all Indigenous cultures, no matter where you go around the world. Um, as I say, those 69 countries which I've travelled, it's never been too too far away from within there. Um, and most certainly works in, in, in many, many areas, but we've got to change the attitude around that fear for people to be able to, I guess, even want to explore what it could do from there um, and what it could look like, because having that immense and roundabout fear around it. Well, when you do partake in, you know, any form of plant medicine, if you go in with fear, well, almost the same way that you will in your etheric, you're actually just going to draw sort of more fear into you. So it's needed to have the right intentions, the right understanding around how to utilize it and how to utilize it in a safe manner uh, to ensure that you can get an effect or an outcome towards what you're looking for. Yeah, that's a good explanation. It is definitely true. Like, um, I remember, I think the reason why a lot of my beliefs around plant medicine and just, um, cannabis in general is like, I see certain types of people using like cannabis and taking it, um, for recreational use and all that. And then you see them turn into criminals, but then at the same time you see other people using it, um, and then they are experiencing incredible healing benefits. So where do you draw the line and like, how do you actually make sure you're using it for the right reason? And what's the difference between someone who gets addicted, I guess, like is what it gets labeled as compared to someone who uses it for those types of reasons? Like how does one person not get addicted and someone else does and it turns them into something else? Yeah, mate, great question. Um, Addiction is really interesting, you know, because I guess the opposite to addiction isn't sobriety. Like it's not being sober, you know, like the, the opposite to addiction is connection. And when people fall into things of addiction, it's really because it's coming from a place of, of lost connection, whether that be with self, whether that be with other, or, or whether that be with community. So everything, I guess, needs to come down to personal responsibility in many, many ways. It most certainly has been something which has been utilized as uh, something which can be utilized to escape things, um, to escape whatever the issue, or whatever it might be that the person's going through. But how do you, how do you break it up? Well, Probably first and foremost is that, you know, when we talk about plant medicine, well, plant medicine, that's a, that's the whole Amazon straight off the bat. There's a lot of, a lot of different things in there. Like we're talking four to 500 different plants just to learn within there. And um, when we talk about mushrooms, again, there's, there's more than just magic mushroom. Magic mushroom is a very generic term, but there's so many different types within that. If I was to talk probably, you know, one which I'm most passionate about would be, you know, even hemp. Um, well, cannabis sativa is the correct name for it, but Cannabis sativa is what most people would know as weed. Well, it's really, it's kind of hemp. Uh, it can categorize hemp. It can also categorize cannabis and it can also categorize in marijuana. And how those three are broken down is the depending on what THC percentage that they actually have. Now, within that plant in itself, which is really, really interesting, and I'll just call it the cannabis plant for this conversation now, but 
when we break down that cannabis plant where we sit at the moment, well, we know of around about 380 properties at the moment, which are all healing properties, 380 different healing properties, but we're still discovering more as we go along. So it's not like we've wrapped it all up at the moment. So within that plant in itself, there's most certainly different there's different healing properties that will work for different areas that have different effects and can work in different ways. But what we really, I guess, probably know, especially in Australia, like we're so on, we really have no education around this really at all in any way, shape or form. We think weed is weed, you know, or marijuana is marijuana and that's kind of where we see it. So I guess we need to, we need to understand and we need to start with like anything. We need to understand what that education is, but it's really important with what your intention is. And I think this, you know, you would agree, I'm sure, Ed, no matter what we talk about, it's like, what's your intention when you're going in towards something? Um, you kind of, no matter what it is, what your intention is, you're, you're generally going to get that result which you're looking for on the back end of that. But you need to really know what you're, I guess you need to, you need to have some sort of an idea or an understanding of what it is that you're actually doing um, before you partake in that. And then when we talk around about that cannabis plant right through to, again, into a uh, psilocybin mushrooms right through to the Amazon, I guess there's almost like levels to that sort of stuff as well too, in regards to how much that will affect your body, uh, how much that will affect the mind as well too. Um, and how, yeah, a, a, a big part of that is really how much that one can, how much that one can surrender to Pachamama to let Pachamama do a thing, you know, no matter what it is that you're actually utilizing. And that's probably where, where you guys were in, in Thailand a couple of weeks ago was like, the bit that you were fighting against was the surrender, you know, um, and having to try and be in control of that. And we really need to surrender to allow it to do what it, what it needs to do. Yeah, definitely. And it is a really like mind blowing process because you're exactly right. When I was feeling like I lost all control of my senses and at the time I didn't realize it was the plant doing its healing and all that. So I kind of had to had felt like I had to take control, but obviously I couldn't. So that's what, amplified the anxiety that I was feeling but afterwards it felt great um but going back to that topic like let's just say I decided my intention was to heal myself because I educated myself I understood from someone like I learned from someone like you the benefits the drawbacks and all that what can plant medicine actually be used for like what specific areas can it heal because I've heard um, military veterans have been able to heal PTSD. I've heard it's been used for other healing purposes, but what specific areas can it actually heal for me if I was going to do it? Yeah, yeah, mate, great. Pretty much everything, but I'll give you a couple of examples in a few different ways. Um, so I think it's really important. We talk, you know, physical, mental, emotional, you know, even spiritual as well too, but um, cannabis is fantastic when we talk around about the physical and the big reason for that and a great a way that I'd like to explain it to people would be that if we were talking about our physical body we'll picture that to be like you know like the car I guess and then if we're talking about the driver well that's very much sort of the etheric body that we kind of work on now when we're talking around about the vehicle and the body of it, well, cannabinol is fantastic in regards to how it can work. And going back to those healing properties of breaking down those 380 different heal healing properties, well, different areas can target different spots. Now, another big thing is when we talk around about our skin, like our skin's our biggest organ. So a big thing around about with cannabis is that it absorbs incredibly well as well into, into our biggest organ of our skin. So it can give us great healing powers. And what we really have within the plant and what makes the cannabis plant so powerful, the healing properties of actually what we call terpenes. So terpenes you would be familiar with in other senses of say um, inflammation, you'll have turmeric for inflammation. Well, it's not the turmeric, it's actually the terpene which comes from the turmeric. So this is what cannabis holds a lot of, like a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean like a lot, like 380 or different terpenes within there. So fantastic on the physical side of things. Now, when we talk around about cannabis as well, there's sort of two sides. So if I break it down to things that people may be familiar with, if I said CBD or anything which is cannabinol really works for the body. And then if we talk around about, I like to call it sort of calming the body down. And the reason why it does do that is that going back to that sort of a car analogy, the driver in the car, is that prior to sort of 1940, we would consume cannabis quite regularly, whether that be in our food, whether that be in our medicine, um, you know, a lot of our clothing, textiles is a big part of everything which we'll utilize. And so it's almost like that 
It's almost like that cannabinol is like the oil to the engine that allows the body to operate smoothly. So within the, you know, the vehicle, the engine kind of has all different, or the car has all different parts to it. So the same as we've got sort of 13 different systems within the body, where the immune system, the digestive system, the respiratory system, and so on. Well, we have a system that oversees that, and that's called the endocrine system. So that's like the mother to all systems. Now, the thing that fuels the mother, that endocrine system, is cannabinoids. So we produce cannabinoids naturally, as actually do, but we are not producing enough. It's a little bit like, um, you know, branch chain amino acids and other things that we need to take extras of to get our supply in particular, you know, the world that we're in. So that CBD and cannabinol work really effective for the body, so many different illnesses that it nails, but not only in the cure space either, Ed, like it's a preventative space. Um, you know, obviously I use it all the time. I couldn't even tell you the last time I was sick in any way, shape or form, you know. But when we talk about THC, well, that's very much, more of what I like to call like the higher consciousness. So it most certainly can work well. There's a lot of therapy which does happen, which is like cannabis assisted, which is usually THC assisted therapies um, in regards to a big part of that is trauma. So when we talk around about, you know, PTSD, well, PTSD is trauma. And if we were to diagnose or label any illness that we know, well, it comes from, you know, a book which is yay big. And it's called the Diagnostic Statistics Manual Number 5. And this is like the medical model where everything comes from. So one thing that it doesn't include in that whole DSM-5 is what we call complex trauma or complex PTSD, which is basically all childhood trauma. And if we actually included that, we'd find that the, the book is only sort of yay big. So trauma is really, I guess, the back route to a lot of the mental health challenges that people have. Um, even feelings of like depression is usually something's happened in the past and we struggle to move on from that and it holds us and what it can do is that it's a little bit like as I sit here and I look at the screen now I'm seeing everything I'm seeing life through my perspective just like you are and like everybody else is but we're only ever seeing it out of our own eyes so things that can work well is obviously THC but one thing which I absolutely swear by if done in the right environment is psilocybin mushrooms like absolutely swear by it and if somebody was to take psilocybin mushrooms and effectively what we call five, you know 5 grams is what you call a hero's journey when we talk around about psilocybin mushrooms which would be the, the magic mushrooms well what that really means is that the the individual becomes the hero of their own story and the best way that I could describe it to, to someone would be that if I was to say to you right now, Ed, uh, picture me and you in Thailand sitting back at that cafe where you had a cookie, you start to play your head movie, right? You can kind of picture it. You, you can vision that into your mind where things that we talk around about magic, you know, the psilocybin, the mushrooms, the magic mushrooms, and similar to things like ayahuasca, um, peyote, San Pedro's, other Amazonic plants is that it gives you the full out-of-body experience where you're no longer looking at it through your eyes. You're looking at it from a, like a fly on the wall, so to speak, or from a different perspective. And it also gives you access of, this is probably a good little thing to utilize, like a little jar here with a few rocks. If I was to say that this is, you know, the capacity of our consciousness and our subconscious, then we can probably only sort of access that, that little white rock there, you know. But when we're under these things here that actually give us these different states of consciousness, well, it, it's like it opens everything up. So it gives us access to be able to go back into past memories and past trauma. It allows us to see that traumatic event that happened that affected us. And it allows us to watch it from a different point of view. And, you know, there's all kinds of emotions that come with that when you're actually faced with those things that have held you back. And in particular, when we talk about, you know, PTSD, now, whatever that individual has gone through, they're seeing it from another perspective, but you're also seeing it from a point of view that it's far bigger than what you are. And it allows you to detach yourself from that. I'll, I'll try to explain that a bit better. For myself, uh, whenever I do therapy with mushrooms, there's things that happen to what I call younger trends. And I don't necessarily mean, you know, five, six, seven. I just mean not the trend that's here today. So what it actually allows me to do is it allows me to separate myself from whatever that challenge is that I've been living with. And it allows me to detach myself from it. And it'll actually allow me and other individuals to have a different perspective of what that is. You will generally find, mate, anyone that I've, uh, for myself, anyone that I know that's ever done it, is that a whole lot of compassion 
a whole lot of forgiveness, a whole lot of understanding, you really do see things through like a whole different light and a whole different lens. Um, some of the more, probably more, ex I don't know if exotic's the right word, but some of the more exotic plants and one which I'm a big fan of uh, is when we talk around about San Pedro, which is like the grandmother from the Amazon. It's something which I've always struggled with is really, uh, I guess, emotions. And that's not so much me giving emotions. I really struggle with accepting emotions. And a lot of that is usually accepting love. And I find that after I've had encounters with that San Pedro, that it literally opens up your heart to a whole nother level, not just when you're actually under it, but it's like it heals the heart opens the heart up, allows you to really see who you are and allows you to remove all of that low self-esteem and allow all of that low doubt. But it almost like turns like your heart nearly into like a vacuum and you start to draw all these other energies that you never once did, you know, like it's got to be an etheric block that goes with it, right? You know, there's got to be other parts that are there that is stopping it, that when it's released and it allows to come back through. So just briefly talking about a couple of those, there's so many different plants that have so many different effects depending on what that person might be going through. But mate, in my opinion, like plants, plants and plants and self-work, self-healing uh, and natural is, that's, that's the answer. Like we've kind of come into these problems we've got through sort of man-made challenges and man-made things, man-made environments where we really need to wind it back. Um, and to go back, go back in time and sort of go back to what we used to do as civilizations before it was really, you know, profit, profit driven, I guess, mate, you know? Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause especially a lot of, uh, I know most people who would be listening to this, they wouldn't be, um, into the whole traditional and mainstream medicine. Cause we know that, um, most of that's driven by corporates anyway, more for profits than health, um, than anything else. And, um, whereas what you're talking about with plant medicine is a very natural approach to it. And that's what I really, um, realized during that whole process. But while you, what you were talking about there, like the benefits around plant medicine, there's different ones depending on what your purpose is like anti-aging um, by the sounds of it is what you were explaining, being able to open up to emotions, being able to receive and accept it. Um, and I'm sure there's many other physical benefits that come with that as well. And it, even having out of body experiences like spiritual awakenings, I know a lot of people have had, and I, I know I had that myself, um, a huge awakening, I guess I is how I saw it as well as like some, some healings that I didn't even realize I needed. So it was really good. And when I heard other people talk about their experiences with plant medicine, and even when I talk about mine, it's like, I kind of think like, it's almost sounds too good to be true. Like how does, how does it even work like that? So could you just share a little bit about the science behind it and how it actually works and what it does? Um, yeah, I guess I'll give you a, I'll, I'll give you sort of my take on on kind of what I believe and and how I believe all that works in in many ways. But it's um you know Bob Marley, my favorite quote from Bob Marley, right, is the best thing about the herb is that when you smoke it, it reveals you to yourself. It really allows you to to come to yourself, no matter which way that you talk around it, and which way that you digest it. So it actually gives you that 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 alone time that time to reflect that time to analyze and that time to be with it for myself it's very much these days uh not even these days but i'd say that like in particular cannabis and a lot of plant-based stuff for me really is probably more spiritual than anything now and it really is sort of connecting to them the higher my higher self and that higher self and even to the point of like you know under some experiences you literally can connect right back to the great divine you know um right back to to as, as far and as deep as that your mind will actually allow it to go the one thing just when you talk about look especially with your audience as well is like the things when we talk around about plant-based stuff is that it very rarely is it really ongoing like it's more of a thing that you might sit or you might partake in when it's needed. It's almost like it's when it's your calling, when you need to go through it. When we talk around it, obviously that mainstream stuff, it's, you know, continual scripts and, and whatever else that it's more like a customer, but it really is like a, it can, it's almost like a one and done scenario. Um, there's many, many, many people that have had many, many, many addictions with many, many things for, for very long periods of time. And after one sitting of like an ayahuasca or a San Pedro, well, it changes their whole perception on life. It then changes every part of their behavior, every part of their thoughts, even what their emotions they might actually be feeling as well too. And changes this, 
it, it literally is like a whole reset, you know? And we can have those moments too when we do, you know, go under the plants and we do go quite deep within that plants and we really have those awakenings. Like they really are almost like, like rebirthing, you know, like rebirthing, resetting and being able to forgive and, and kind of move on from those things. Um, sorry, just repeat that question to me again. Sorry, you asked me about the science behind... Behind how it actually works because it almost sounds too good to be true when you hear it. Yeah, well, a lot of it's to do with what we call the CB1 and the CB2 receptors, which is really like the neurons within the brain um, and how they will actually affect and how they can harmonize things. I think that a lot of the things that actually comes together is that, you know, we live in this man's world very much these days, so to speak. But when man and plant can come together, that's when we can really be within harm. You know, that's when we can really find that higher self, which gives us the ability to heal ourselves, you know, to create and to manifest what it is that we want to, you know, whatever it is that we desire within our lives as well too. And I think that that's a big part of really what we're missing. We're not, we're not really discovering anything new by any means. We're just kind of slowly drip feeding back out to the mainstream, what's always been around uh, and what's always been effective and what's always worked, you know, like, yes, it's, it's great to have your, your doctors and whatever in this world now, but for thousands and tens of thousands of longer, like shamans were always the healers, you know, like shamans was as I would always go down. You'd go and see the shaman, you'd go and sit on the hill for the three or four days and you'd go through whatever you needed to go through and whatever challenges that you were facing or whatever that you needed to overcome, whether it be physical, mental, spiritual, emotional or anything, then, you know, these needs were met. Yeah, definitely. That's a good way to put in a good explanation. Um, so, We've been talking a lot about the benefits and that's what it felt like to me is I just felt like when I did a complete nervous system reset and I've heard that same thing from other people, it also makes sense when people who have PTSD, say like a military veteran, for example, it just completely resets their nervous system is what I've heard about and that's what it felt like. So I guess that's another thing to add to that. Um, but on the other hand, like we talk a lot about the positive impact of, that it can have and I believe, and I'm, I know you said this to me as well, but it's, it comes down to the individual and how they use it. But ultimately, when people think of plant medicine and using it for healing purposes, are there any kind of limitations or drawbacks that they need to be mindful of when they actually do it? Or um, like, what's the other side? To it? Yeah, mate, there's probably, there, there's de there definitely is. There's always things that you've got to look for in regards to, you know, the safety and, and eliminating any forms of danger. I think the first thing, is that you know there's a lot of myths around things as well too and i think in particular with cannabis like to this day cannabis has never taken anybody's life in history no matter how far you go back um and i think that's an important thing to know if anyone's ever under that and they have moments where they might be feeling like they're they're losing it they're going to lose control like it's probably not so much lose control it's probably more of a different perspective of sort of surrender to it um and and trust the process and trust that whatever it is that you're going to be faced with you know under that experience is something which you just need to sit with or you need to deal with there is most certainly levels 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 to it where i believe probably the entry level or if it was something with somebody who was sort of wanting to begin to experience or start to understand it i think education first and foremost is, is obviously always vital but we can do things that you know there's some things which i do uh, in regards to like just CBD, which is just the, the cannabidiol, which really just works onto the body. Uh, it doesn't affect the mind in any way. And that's really like your entry level, your entry point. And it can be a big step because people that might, that might have fear for things and think they're going to feel crazy things or they're going to go through an experience will probably realize that, no, it's quite a pleasant and quite a calming and nowhere near as on the extreme in any way, shape or form. Um, when you talk around about sort of going from there, there's a big difference between digesting things um, going through the digestive system versus smoking something going to the respiratory system. So this would be like, and I'll use your, you know, your story with the boys the other week is like when you have an edible, it's quite a long process. You know, it takes quite some time to go through that. Um, in particular, it's going to depend on what the body is, what their metabolism is like, what they've even had prior, before, after, not just, you know, what their mental capacity is. But when we digest things, then yeah, that can take, you know, anywhere up to 12 hours for that whole process to go. Um, very common thing, and I've seen people have edibles, well, I'll have an edible and two hours later, they think, you know, this is terrible, this is rubbish, I'm going to have another go. And, you know, my mother's a great example of that. And, yeah, you know, you have another hit of it, and then it all kind of hits you at one go. And that can be too overwhelming, that can be too much for that. 
the one thing which I guess when we talk about anything, it's always sort of kind of start slow, you know, start with what you're comfortable with, what you're safe with. Um, digesting, smoking most certainly will affect the mind. Uh, there are other things that we call topicals, which is just applying to the body. Um, and applying to the body is a huge thing. Again, our skin being as our biggest organ, well, that's going to absorb more than anything. Um, when we talk around about, you know, mushrooms, there's some really, really, really good mushrooms that I believe everybody should be taking daily. Um, and that's what we would call nootropic mushrooms. So that are mushrooms that do not have any psychedelic effect whatsoever. Um, lion's mane is fantastic. The amount of young people that I've sort of worked with and myself included that used to take a lot of things if they were, you know, being told they were ADHD or ADD or had behavior issues. Well, really, it's because they're not stimulated. They're in an environment that doesn't stimulate them and it's quite boring. Uh, but lion's mane will really bridge the left side and the right side of the brain in a natural way and will give complete harmony to the mind, like absolutely incredible. Um, Asquander is another great one as well too. We've got some really good ones in nootropics. So again, the nootropics is probably similar to like CBD um, and the CB sort of categories of cannabis. And then like your THC. And then I guess when you talk around about your psilocybin, within your magic mushrooms, they're ones, and if, if it was something that people were new to, then, you know, my advice is most certainly to be in the company of somebody that uh, that has done it before or knows a little bit about it, someone that you that you trust and that you're sort of safe with, just for your first experience to realise that it's probably not a um, nowhere near as traumatic as what you think it might be. But if you go into things like you guys did, Ed, unaware, then it can be like a real like bang, like, holy shit, what's just happened, you know, because you weren't really expecting that. Um, for some more, you know, some when we talk sort of more uh, plants that really do take over that you really have to surrender to. And if you don't, it can be a very, very long, you know, 24, 48 hours would be things like ayahuasca, San Pedro, those type of things need to be done, you know, under the supervision with the support of a shaman in, in every way, shape or form. Um, and those type of things would be like for significant amounts of trauma and, and things that people, addiction traumas, just those, I guess, those ruts that people get get within, they need to be done with the right people. Um, you know, and you correct shamans that would do that. There are some great ones. And if anyone reaches out in your network, I'm more than happy to put them in touch with the right people here in Australia. But you really want to ensure that these are, you know, bloodlines of shamans um, really come from the Amazon as well too, that have done all their training within the Amazon that really bring, you really, you got to respect it. Like at, at the end of the day, that's, I guess, that's what it all comes down to. Like you've really got to respect the plant. Um, you've really got to respect mother nature in every way, shape or form when you take plant bakes. If you do not respect it, you'll get a very rude shock very quickly. You know, if you go in with the right intentions and with the right respect uh, and you've gone about it the right way, then you will be absolutely amazed what people can work through within those. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And you mentioned those ones about ayahuasca, San Pedro and all that for significant amounts of trauma. But for someone who's more wanting to, I guess, optimize their daily health. Because when we talk about being your own physician, a lot of people say that from the perspective that they want to live every day um, with good vitality, good well-being and good health. So what are some good ones to kind of start on a smaller level to more focus around that, optimizing on a smaller level? Yeah, mate, the, the, the one that needs to be taken, and like it absolutely needs to be taken is CBD. Like no two ways about that. Just again, think of that like the like the engine, your body being the car and the engine not having any oil in it and hasn't had oil for a very long time. We really need to get that. If we're talking around about joints, ligaments, tendons, we're talking about mobility, we're talking about no inflammation, uh, blood pressures, we'll never have high blood pressures, we'll never have high cholesterol in the space of only sort of six weeks of utilizing CBD, you'll have low cholesterol, uh, no blood pressures. Um, your eyesight, your clarity, and just for, I guess, sort of go back to thinking about those 13 systems, like the immune system. One thing that, you know, I'm sure your followers here as well too, that we all went through these last or well, a few years ago now was this whole, whole COVID bullshit, right? And this whole vaccination, rah, 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 rah. Like we, we knew a hell of a long time ago that CBD kills any influenza, kills any COVID, kills absolutely anything under the sun. Was that allowed to be published and was that allowed to be pushed out during that time? Absolutely not, but it's all rolling out now. Like there's ample stuff starting to roll out now. So CBD is a must have, like an absolute must have in my opinion for anyone and everyone. Um, I do not believe that that, that's, that starts at the word go and understand our pets as well too. Like cats and dogs have got endocrine systems, same thing. So, you know, I know so many pets out there and people, 
pets generally pick up the etheric energy of those that are around them, right? Um, so even for pets as well, too, any nervous pets, I'd find it very hard to believe if, if the majority of society wasn't feeling some form of nervousness or some form of like a uh, a dry a dry engine to their car, you know, that could use a bit of assistance. So absolutely make CBD. Um, and that would really just be sort of digesting it. And then if anyone has any body pains in any way, shape or form, whether that be post-surgery, lower backs, necks, uh, then you want to use like a topical uh, and apply that to the body. Um, that's just sort of again using the skin as the organ and, and applying it to the or uh, applying it to the skin and allowing the skin to absorb that and, and do its thing. You know, mm. and, and, probably, about, and the new tropics in there as well too, mate. Just to, to highlight those ones as well too. Yeah, you, So you mentioned about that one is a must-have for a lot of people. But when you talk about that, what would you consider like a safe amount or a good intake like is it once a day once a week a couple of days a week um, or what yeah so how you when you're talking around about cbd um to keep it as as simple as i can as effective as i can is that it breaks down to whenever you have you know this is one of one of my oils which i have with kind of so this one here is like a, it's a 30 mil bottle that now within this bottle, then what we actually have is you have 2000 milligrams of CBD within that bottle. So every uh, every one mil is like say, um, 66 milligrams. So really what you wanna to look towards is you wanna try and match the amount of milligrams to what your body weight is, is really what a daily dose would be. So I sort of sit at like 80 kilos. So for myself, it's just like a little bit over a mil, which I take every single day. Um, with a mil being 66 milligrams. I don't know if that's getting too deep in there, but that's really the dose of what we need when we talk around our body to weight ratio um, in regards to what we actually need for cannabis. For cannabinol is effectively one milligram per one kilo of body weight. Hmm. And I hope that answers your question because we had one come through. What is the best CBD to take and where to get it from Australia? Um, is there, so yeah, that answers the ratio, but um just to quickly answer that question in the comments uh where's the best place to get cbd in australia i know you sell your own oils and all that so maybe you could share about that yeah there's one thing which i will just highlight just quickly because it is an important thing that we only face here within australia and that's because of our driving uh, our driving laws so with our driving laws within australia is that we are tested for thc now, the thing with THC is that it will store into our body for up to 30 days, for potentially 30 days it stores within the body. So when we talk around about Australian road rules is that if we have traces of THC, then that's what's actually deemed as an offence, uh, as a criminal offence. So what you've got to look for, and naturally within the plant, the plant will naturally produce 0.3 THC. So with what I've done with these guys, I can put my hand on my heart and I have all the uh, the paperwork to show you that this has got zero THC within it. So it's just 100% THC with the Carnivosum that has uh, has no fears about losing the license. And that was really why I made that one that way. Another great place to access things with a large amount, you know, with THC, even large amounts of THC, because when we talk around about things like cancer, well, THC is really important when we talk about cancer and even THC being used as a topical, so even that being applied to the body is huge. Um, when we talk about, you know, tumours, uh, incredible, you know, THC applied to tumours will basically get rid of it in a matter of months. Um, so the Australian Cannabis University is a fantastic place to acquire other things um, for different levels for anyone which is utilising for that. Um, one of the old faithfuls as well too is, you know, out at Nimbin, we have the Hemp Embassy, which is also the, the legalised uh, Cannabis Australian Party, which operates out of there. So they're really, I guess, kind of like the three go-tos, myself, the ACU, Australian Cannabis University, uh, or the Hemp Embassy. Um, you can acquire things, obviously, through pharmaceutical as well, too. Um, you know, effectively, things that come through pharmaceutical, they'll come through in their little bags and they've got their labels onto it. The truth of the matter is, is it's things in pharmaceutical is probably about three times more expensive um, as to what you would find from any one of those other three places, which I told you about. And that's obviously for a, um, you know, government's invested interests and, and whatnot. Mm. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's a good point you brought up with the legal aspect of it. So apart from that, like when someone's consuming 
cannabis or just THC or anything of that kind. Is there any other thing to keep in mind when it comes to laws around it, especially in Australia yep. and the Western world? Yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Australia is the only country in the world where zero means zero. When we talk about 0% THC, the rest of the world, zero THC actually means 0 0.03 or less. So that's a really important thing. Um, I always advise that if people are utilizing, so if you, you don't have any discretionary, even if you were a TJ approved patient through the medical system, then there's no, uh, uh, there's no special treatment or any, in any, any way, shape or form, if you would have pulled up for an, RB, an RDT. So the things that we do know and things that I would advise, especially to your listeners would be that, um, the testing that goes on when we're talking around about THC, it's absolutely like it's so ridiculous because you're testing for traces, not from impairments, first and foremost. So, really, how it kind of works and how the the Australian, you know, the, well, the states kind of push it, it's almost like you need to um, you need to nearly like throw yourself in it, I guess, to be honest with you. So, if anybody was ever had any unfortunate circumstance, because you can just be in passive smoke as well, too, right? And you can pick this stuff up as well, too. But if anyone has ever tested, uh, was ever pulled over an RDT in any way, shape or form, and they do use cannabis and they know that they are not currently under the influence of cannabis or they're not impaired by it, it's always good just to let the people, let the officers know that you are somebody that uses cannabis for your health and that you ask for them to use their discretion. Most of the time you'll find they probably wouldn't go down an avenue of, of doing that. But the safe time when we talk around about impairment would be eight hours after the effect has died off, is what we say. Um, and that's not what I say. That's what our roads and rules, like for us, me over here in Byron Service, New South Wales, has that listed on their website. So it's always important. I couldn't tell you for the guys in WA in that, but just always to have a bit of a look in regards to what they're saying the safe time is after you've consumed it before that you actually use utilize a vehicle or a uh, you know um, equipment machinery or anything like that um just to be safe just so you know i guess so you know where you're at mm. yeah. That's, those are some good tips and i guess some um, we did have a question come through which you briefly answered but would be good to um elaborate on is what would you suggest for anyone with chronic illnesses like cancer for example Yep. Um, I would absolutely, uh, for, if this is, you know, for someone on here, I would highly recommend uh, going to the, jumping online and just going to the Australian and Australian Cannabis University. They have got some incredible consultants and they really specialize in serious illnesses. Um, you would actually be able to book yourself in. You can usually get in there within 24 hours to speak to one of their professionals. A lot of their professionals are um, people that have got their own professional experience, but they also have lived experience as well too. They've got a super, super tight criteria to be involved with those guys. And that way there, you're going to get direct information specific to you because again, there's 380 different properties. So you want to find out which is the best one for yourself, where it's at, understanding where you currently are in that process of recovery or in that process of what that journey might look like but highly recommend speaking to a cannabis consultant through, and for myself, I think within Australia, we're not the biggest place. I think the Australian Cannabis University is the best place to go um, for that one-on-one -on -one consultation. Well, that's all the questions I had prepared. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to put it in. But from my point of view, that was really informative. Like I had never understood plant medicine. Like I, I, I was telling you about it um, when I was speaking to you two weeks ago, but actually even this session alone, being able to make informed decisions on health is so important. Most people, when they go into something like plant medicine or some kind of ceremony or, or anything, they kind of go into it not knowing what to expect because a friend told them about it or something. But um, I guess from my perspective, the only thing I would say is like how important it is to take self-responsibility and, uh, when it comes to using plant medicine. So the last question I'll ask you while people are coming in is um, what your take is on self-responsibility with plant medicine. Like how can someone make sure that if they this is the path for them, like after listening to this or listening to more stuff, um, how can they make sure and what resources can they follow to make sure they are taking the right steps with self-responsibility? Yeah, I mean, I love responsibility is the backbone to everything, right? Um, I think it's just always so important to know that everybody is going to be different and we're all in different stages of our lives and we've all got different understandings, different perceptions to all of that. I think first and foremost, 
uh, if it's something with we're kind of contemplating around about taking a step, then I'd probably say just to spend a little bit of time in that pre-contemplation space and, and look around about some education around about that. I would also be very mindful just as to where you get the information from. Um, so again, places like, you know, the, the Nimbin Hemp Embassy, again, the Australian Cannabis University, places like this that specialize in resources and tools for online training, but also for books and bits and pieces where you're going to get stuff that hasn't been, um, you're going to get real information, not things that have been censored or things that have been, you know, modified or, or, or sort of swept underneath. That's going to be a huge part, uh, I think, as well, too, in regards to taking it slow, um, understanding as well, too, that things don't really, nothing ever happens overnight. So to be patient with that, uh, being patient in that process, and probably also thinking around about the people that you may have within your environment, kind of getting them to understand what steps you're making as well, too. So then you've got the correct support around that. I think no matter what change that you make in any part of your life, if you don't have the right support around it, then it can be very, very difficult. Um, and if you don't have that support, then it really just can add another layer of change to that. So we we'll most certainly invite other people to come along with that. Um, you know, for anyone else, anyone that's on, you know, for part of you guys here at the Awakening Within, more than happy to, to share my email there as well to Ed and, uh, Ed and I can send out more specific things that people might find if uh, if that's something which they're after. But more than happy to, to be an assistant and, and offer myself to those guys. Yeah, that'd be good. And before, because I'll get you to share about what you do in your company and if people want to stay in touch with you or get involved with your products. So, but before I do that, there was a question that came through, which is um, if you were taking it prof prophylactically, could you take it just before going to bed so the level in the blood would be legally low enough to drive by in the morning? Uh, great question. Great question. I, um, yeah, really great question. I, I had to, I sort of had to sit with this, this type of question and I've gone through this many, many, many times, like 15 years. And I guess for myself, I bring it back to responsibility, funnily enough, where if I feel that I'm being responsible about it, I'm not so much trying to beat the system because my health is more important than, you know, I guess a, a small gray area within the system. If I know that I'm not impaired uh, and I would never drive a vehicle impaired in any way, shape or form, um, then I think it's really just around about, I guess it's really just about making your own judgment. That question in particular you know, I'm somebody that, you know, I smoke cannabis every single night. I'm probably about 20 minutes away from doing it now. Um, and I always sleep and I get up and I train every single morning consistently. Um, it's always with out of my system, but I'm really, I guess I'm comfortable in what that would look like if I did encounter a problem with that. And I guess a lot of that, to go back to your question there, Gemma, is that I base a lot of things off the New South Wales, and I know that it's eight hours. So I know that I'll be asleep by 10, 10, 30. So I know that by the time it comes around, I know that I would be probably A-OK. -okay, and I would just say that I would take that advice. Um, yeah, I think that's just a, obviously something, a decision which you would make for yourself, um, uh, Jan. That'd be something which you'd make for yourself. But I think that'd be quite reasonable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and the, the other question we got from Gemma is I'm looking at the Khan Blossom website. Is there some way to give info about what the healing properties are for each product? Yeah. So with, with that one there, Gemma, is what I've done with Khan Blossom is Khan Blossom is just one product is what it is. So what it actually is, it's the oil. So again, it's the 100% THC free oil. I utilize this same oil um, and I actually utilize it again within the gummy format. So it's exactly the same product, just in a, in a, in a different, a different way of taking it. And then the role on which I have, I haven't got any floating around at the moment, they're in the office there, but um, the role on it also has a couple of things, which is wintergreen oil. It has witch hazel in there. We've got eucalyptus. We've got some linalool. So all the products are much the same and, I guess that what I'll share with you guys here about this carnivosum is that the plant, what we know is that CBD is great within itself, but the one thing that carnivosum has, which is unique to any other product that I've come across in the whole world is that we think of it like a cold pressed juice is the best way to get it. We get a big cannabis plant or a hemp plant, we squeeze it and we get the oil out of that. And then what we actually do is there's so many different properties. So we isolate just the CBD out of it. But then what we also do is we take some of those other properties 
Um, and we also take some of those other terpenes and we also get some other plants and we do the same thing with other plants and we squeeze those other plants. And then we also take the healing properties out of those plants. So I'll give you an example of one of those would be we use the lavender plant and it's called linalool. So linalool is that calm, it's, you know, it's a lavender smell. It's quite calming. It's anti-anxiety. Anti it's anti-nervous. Um, it's anti-inflammation. So what we actually do with the carnivosum is we utilize the terpenes or 16 other terpenes and we put it with the oil. So it's CBD oil, but then it's also got the 16 other terpenes with it. Um, if you were to find other oils out there, majority, I'd say that 99% of those would just be CBD. Um, it wouldn't be the terpene profile. And to let you guys in without sort of overloading you too much, but you know, we've been aware of me and my team have been aware of this for you know probably in about the last two or three years. But it's really yes, the CBD does one part, but it's really the terpenes that are the real drivers of what that healing properties actually are. So when we're looking talking about CBD, ensuring that we've got terpenes within it is vital. Um, and I'll just say on that point there, the reason why the cannabis plant is so powerful is it's the only plant that has all of the terpenes that we know from other plants in the one plant. So we get bits and pieces of that from the CBD, but then we load those extra 16 on top of that. I hope that makes sense. That's not too confusing. There's a little there's a lot of there's a lot of parts of this plan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure the more you get educated, like listening to you, you like eventually it'll click. Yeah. <laughs> it gets um, there for a bit. Um, the other question we had here was what is a reasonable price for 100 milliliter CBD? Yeah, so 100, 100 mil, um, I presume what you're saying there, not 100 milligrams. Uh, it can get quite confusing and uh, that quite often gets mixed up. I know that pharmaceutical generally start out at 100 milligrams um, and a bottle, probably got some here actually. Um, we're ever sort of com comparing bits and pieces all the time. So this would be one which would be, this is like quite a mainstream one when we're talking around about pharmaceutical. Uh, it, you know, when I got this a few years ago, by the time I had an appointment of 60, 70 bucks, uh, this bottle, which is a 50 mil bottle is $380, which is just absolutely ridiculous, like absolutely ridiculous. Some of the things that you would acquire would sort of look more like this from the Hemp Embassy. Um, and this one here is a... This one would be a thousand milligrams. This guy here is a one thousand milligram, and that's two hundred and sixty dollars. Uh, when you talk around about that coming from the hemp embassy, that's probably a thousand milligrams around about the two hundred and fifty dollar mark. Is probably around about the right number. Um, but if you have a look at, if you get onto the Carnabossum one, I do these guys here for one hundred and forty four dollars, and they're two thousand milligrams, um, and it's it's just around about getting Australians exactly what they need. But that would give you a bit of an idea. It's probably around about the 200, 220, maybe 220 to 250 is probably about the right price for, for a 1,000 milligram, um, which would be between 30 to 50 mils. And we got a question here from uh, Gemma again. Have you got a list of benefits of turpines on the website or is it best to email? Yeah, no, on that one there, Gemma, there is. If you just go to the FAQs, there'll be a few bits around about the, um, it'll be around the terpenes and, and in particular the 16 extra that we put into it. But what you can also do as well is that you should have, when you, if you go to kanehbosm.com.au, you should have a, a pop-up box which will come up for a free ebook. And if you just punch your email into there, then you'll get a free ebook. And we go right into, you know, what the cannabinol is, what the terpenes are, how they affect, where we get it from, what it looks like. Um, but that's most certainly there. And if not, I'll um, I'll leave it in this chat here and you, you're more than welcome to, to reach out. And I think what would be helpful as well, like as well as putting your email in for people that want to reach out to you, is like um, if you want to quickly explain your products and just quickly take people through what you do and all that, just so people can be aware if they want to like be educated more or just listen to more of your stuff. Yeah, I guess that my I guess the mission, which I'm sort of on at the moment, uh, with myself and you know with and with a very small sort of close team as well too is bringing people back just to natural ways of living um bringing people back to education and and understanding just really just getting us back to living in harmony you know and we truly 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 believe that man and planet together um can create harmony but we need to work together 
So a lot of things which I do is just sort of, I guess, giving people the tools and that's around cannabis products to give them the tools uh, to allow that nervous system to calm down, to get their endocrine system aligned. I do a lot of education around about sort of subconscious and unconscious thoughts as well too, and kind of rewiring your brain as well too, to, to shake any of those old beliefs out that no longer serve you in any way. Um, I very much do a lot of stuff where I talk directly to the individual. So I do a lot of more of my individual stuff through my prevent consultants work where I'm, uh, very similar to what the boys do here. A lot of empowerment stuff, getting people onto the right track. Um, really, I guess what kind of blossoms all around about is breaking the stigma. It's around about playing a part in actually being, seeing the end of this war on drugs. Uh, for myself, it's around about changing the perception of, of drugs being a criminal thing. And in particular, when we talk about natural medicine, natural plants being classified in those categories to change that stigma, to bring people back. It's also to expose people. What I'm really trying to do is expose people the power of not just what the plant can do for an individual as a health, but the whole building industry changes. The whole textile, all these Australian farmers that have been on it so tough for so long, they should all be hemp farms. We should be the biggest exporter in every way. It's the strongest textile. Like Henry, Henry Ford in 1940 made a car, Ford Motors made a car out of hemp that ran on hemp fuel, you know. When James Cook came out here, the one thing he had to bring was hemp seeds because you can start a civilization from hemp, you know. It's the highest omega-369 fat you can get as well too. So I guess what I'm doing is just shedding light. Um, I do a lot of stuff at the moment, kind of in the real world, speak at a lot of expos, do a lot of chats. Um, I've been lucky enough to engage with the Thai government just recently. They sort of opened the floodgates and they found that everybody kind of went recreational and it got a little bit out of control. So I guess for myself, really, Ed, and for your viewers, is I'm just trying to be the representation of the plant at the moment, um, speaking for the plant the, the best way that I can, and really correlating the power of the plant for this, you know, this, this real epidemic of, of mental health crisis that, that we're having, you know? Yeah. What you were saying about Thailand recreational, I, I'm, I'm not speaking for myself at all. That has just gotten out of hand. <laughs> but, um, yeah. We also did get a question there. Do you think humanity can get back to living in harmony without plant medicine? Um, no. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that we will only get back into harmony when, 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 man, and, when, when man and plant, when uh, the modern day man and, and mother nature can, can come back together, when we can actually be within harmony. And I think a big, a big part of that is we need to remove some of the judgment that we've kind of been driven in. Uh, I think that a, a million percent, I think that hemp, hemp saves the world in every way, shape or form in every industry that we talk about, you know, clothing, textiles, fuel, uh, can play a huge part. Absolutely. And that's my personal take. Hmm. And I guess the last thing too, I'll ask you is, um, for people that want to get more in contact with you and your products, what's the best way to contact you? Um, what I might do is I might just put it into the chat box here. I'll throw the, the website and I'll just put my uh, personal email in there as well, mate. And if anybody wants to reach out, uh, I'm more than happy to, to get in contact. And if I can assist, then I most certainly will. Yeah, that'd be good if you could put it in there for everyone. Because, um, yeah, what you were saying about your vision and being an ambassador and a representation of all that, I think we're all for that. Everyone um, in this world definitely has a part to play in terms of breaking the stigma in a lot of aspects of health. And that's what we're all about at the Awakening Within. So we're all for it. Yeah, thanks, mate. I always appreciate the support from you guys. Mm. But that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, thanks again, Trent, for your time. It's been really great having you on. And I've enjoyed this interview a lot myself and learned a lot from it. Um, and yeah, like I said, we're all for your mission and um and would, if we ever want to get you back, it would be great to have you on here again, sharing your philosophies and education around plant medicine, because I think it's going to help a lot of people when they realize the actual impact it can have. Absolutely, Ed, mate. Thanks for having me on, mate. Really appreciate it. And then, uh, always great to chat, mate. Yeah, always good. So thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you guys next time. Awesome. Thanks, guys.